Here at the Rideshare Guy, we get a lot of feedback from Uber and Lyft drivers, and their comments usually fall into one of two categories, people who are happy with the gig and people who aren't. There's also a third type of commenter who thinks I am awkward and creepy and that I don't have enough facial hair. Personally, I couldn't agree more. I can't wait for the day when I can ditch this ill-conceived meat shell and upload my consciousness directly into the matrix where I'll have a beard so long that I can use it like a grappling hook to escape social situations. Until then, I'm here to address the first two types of comments with a recent article from one of my fellow contributors titled The Seven Stages of Rideshare Driver Separation. It's proven to be one of our most popular articles, and it helps explain why some people are enthusiastic about the job while other people think it's highway robbery. It turns out that over half of drivers quit within their first year, but no matter how long they stick it out for, the stages they go through tend to be pretty similar. The first stage is blissful ignorance. You sign up, you get started, it's really easy. There's a lot of customers to meet and new people and interesting things to see. You're driving around, you're having fun. It's a pretty good gig, right? You can set your own hours, you can work, work as much or as little as you like, and things aren't so bad when you first start out. The second stage is excitement. Um, you've been at it for a little while, you've started to figure out the hot spots, the best times to drive, you're keeping a close eye on your ratings, looking at all your feedback, all your compliments, and it's still pretty fun at this point in the early stages. In the third stage, you start to have some rumblings of discontent. Maybe your ratings drop all of a sudden and you can't figure out why, and you're going through in your head trying to figure out which passenger was the one that dinged you on the rating. Or maybe you just had a bad interaction with a passenger or someone made you feel uncomfortable. In any event, you're starting to feel a little bit doubtful that maybe this isn't the gig that you thought it was. In the fourth stage, there's a growing awareness. You're calculating your earnings versus your expenses, and maybe you're making less than you anticipated after gas and maintenance and tires and oil changes. It all starts to add up, and maybe you realize that the money that you were making actually comes with a lot more expenses than you realized. You may also be investigating rideshare insurance. Maybe you didn't realize you needed it, and now you do, and you find out that it costs a little bit more than what you were paying before. Um, these sort of little things start to add up over time and uh, really kind of tend to open your eyes a little bit to how the experience works and uh, that maybe Uber and Lyft aren't as great of a gig as you initially thought. A lot of drivers then go to stage five where they get a second wind. And this isn't necessarily because they want to keep driving. It may be just because they have to pay the rent. Um, you know, we all have bills that are due and we all need money to pay them. Uber and Lyft are one of the most accessible jobs out there for a lot of people. They do require a car, but the requirements are pretty easy to meet apart from that if you have a, a newer vehicle. So it is one of the more accessible gigs and a lot of people do turn to it for extra cash for that reason. Um, and it's definitely better than nothing. It's definitely better than being unemployed or, you know, missing your rent payment, missing your cell phone bill. All those things are pretty important and uh, it's understandable why a lot of drivers keep driving. Um, and maybe they don't keep driving out of necessity, you know, maybe they take a break for a few weeks and they come back and they find that they missed it a little bit. Or maybe they had a great conversation with a passenger. Maybe they caught that big surge fare, you know, at the end of the night. Um, so there are these things that kind of keep drivers in the game for a little bit longer than they might otherwise be in it. The sixth stage of driver separation is shock and anger. Maybe something really bad happens, you're in an accident and you find out that Lyft's deductible is $2,500. Or maybe Uber didn't give you a guarantee that you thought you were getting because of some technicality. Um, and you have to email Uber support and you find out that the support system isn't very good. All you can get is an automated kind of exchange system and there isn't really anyone to talk to about an issue. Um, and you start to realize that to these rideshare companies, the drivers are really just a disposable commodity. Um, you see through their niceties and their in the way that they communicate in the in the way that they communicate with their drivers, how they will say one thing but do another and kind of sugarcoat everything, but you start to be able to see through that and see the real message, you know. You start to understand why Uber hasn't added a tipping option and why Lyft still has that really high deductible. It's because drivers are replaceable. Um, they don't really care about maintaining you as a driver on the platform because there's always going to be another driver ready to replace you. Um, so in this sixth stage, you really start to see that and see the whole picture. The seventh stage is resignation and separation. 
everything is clear at this point and you start looking for ways out of the rideshare industry. Maybe you apply for Amazon Flex or Caviar or just anything to get you out of the Uber Lyft uh, kind of game. Trucking jobs, delivery jobs, maybe you know driving on a route of some kind. Really just anything to get you out of the system and get that income coming in in some other way. And once you do that, you can cut the cord. Uber and Lyft aren't what they used to be. With pay rates dropping and demand stagnating, ride sharing is best as a side gig or a temporary thing to get you through a rough month or two. But if you're new to all this, don't think of ride sharing as a main source of income. It's just too unpredictable and the pay is too low. And if you've been at it for a while, you know that after your night's third or fourth batch of boisterous, entitled drunk people, it can start to feel a little dehumanizing after a while. Of course, Plenty of people are making it work by driving full time. And if that's you, more power to you. I've been in the same boat. Harry and myself and the rest of the team at the Rideshare Guy are here to help. And even if this is your side gig or a temporary job, we love showing people how to work the system as best they can. But it's also important to be realistic about the downsides of the on-demand industry. Will things improve eventually? I don't know. The industry is still pretty young. Uber and Lyft don't have facial hair yet either. And although self-driving cars are coming, it seems like there's still a number of years away. In the meantime, I hope us humans can come together and organize ourselves and really put pressure on these companies to treat us more fairly. Until then, hang in there, and as always, drive safe.